Hello everyone, welcome to Nilanjana's exclusive English lessons and today we are going to learn the lesson The Homecoming written by Ramdanath Tagore. It is a story of Fatik Chakravarti, a 14-year-old boy whose boyish mischief leads to his being sent away to Kolkata to live with his uncle. Tagore pierces the heart of the reader with his depiction of homesickness, rejection and isolation. So in this story, the protagonist is Fatik Chakravarti. He is a 14-year-old boy, an adolescent, a teenager, and he is quite mischievous. He is also not good at studies. So definitely everybody uh, at his place, especially his mother, uh, is quite distressed with him and uh, Fatik is sent away to Kolkata with his uncle so that he can complete his studies over there. But however, um, his mother fails to understand Fatik because as an adolescent, he needs some love and recognition and also a lot of emotional security from his mom, which probably is missing in his life. So let's begin the story. Fatik Chakravarti was ringleader among the boys of the village. Ringleader means a group leader. A new mischief got into his head. There was a heavy log lying on the mud flat of the river waiting to be shaped into a mast for a boat. Now mud flat, mud flat means the sediment that is brought by the river uh, after low tide. So the, there was a heavy log that was lying on this uh, mud flat of the river and the log was kept there because it had to be shaped into a mast. Now mast is a part of the boat any kind of a sailing vessel which is required to take the ship forward. And this is usually made of wood. So Fatik and his gang, they decided that they should work together to shift the log by main force from its place and roll it away. So he and his friends decided that let's shift the log. There was no reason why they wanted to do it. Probably it was just for the sake of some fun. The owner of the log would be angry and surprised and they would all enjoy the fun. So this was the main reason why they wanted to shift. Everyone seconded the proposal. Everybody agreed and it was carried unanimously. Everybody supported and everybody decided to go ahead with this plan. Just as the fun was about to begin, Makhan Fatik's younger brother sauntered up. Now Makhan is Fatik's younger brother and he is just the opposite of Fatik. First of all, he's quite disciplined. Second thing, he's not as wild as Fatik. And the third thing is he's good in studies. So these two brothers, they never got along. Uh, you know, they didn't get along well. And, uh, it, and when they were about to do, you know, push the log, that is when he came and he sauntered up. Sauntered means he walked in a very casual, relaxed manner and sat down on the log in front of them all without a word. The boys were puzzled for a moment. He was pushed rather timidly. So they tried to push him, but with not with that kind of force because they were also scared that how he would react. By one of the boys and told to get up, but he remained quite unconcerned. So they tried to, you know, get him out of the way, but he was quite unconcerned. He appeared like a young philosopher meditating on the futility of games. So he just had an attitude that, you know, oh, what worthless games these guys are playing. And he appeared like a young philosopher as if he's contemplating on some serious subject. Fatik was furious, very angry. Makhan, he cried, if you don't get down this minute, I will thrash you. So he just threatened this boy and said that if you don't get down my way, and then I'm going to hit you. Makhan only moved to a more comfortable position. So he just made him more comfortable and he turned a deaf ear to whatever he said. Now, if Fatik was to keep his regal uh, dignity before the public, regal means royal. Now, Fatik also had his ego because he had his gang with him. And in front of his gang, his brother is refusing to obey him. So he had to satisfy his ego, right? So it was clear he ought to carry out his threat. So he wanted to carry out this threat, but his courage failed him. But somehow he didn't have the courage to go and hit his brother. His fertile brain, however, rapidly seized upon a new maneuver, a new plan, a clever move or plan. Maneuver means a clever move or plan, which would discomfit his brother, which would make his brother uh, feel very uneasy and uncomfortable. And at the same time, 
afford his followers an added amusement and that could also entertain his uh, gang so he gave the word of command to roll the log and makhan over together so he said let's roll the log let makhan sit and let's roll the log so we know what is going to be the con consequence right makhan is going to fall makhan heard the order and made it a point of honor to stick on so makhan also had her is ego and he uh, you know just kept on sitting he overlooked the fact like those who attempt earthly fame in other matters that there was peril in it but that time he didn't realize that there was some danger also with it peril means danger they began to heave at the log with all their might so it was quite a heavy log so they uh, started uh, you know heaving means with a lot of noise they tried to push it further calling out one two three go and at the word go the log went and with it went makhan's philosophy glory and all so makhan had a great fall less like humpty dumpty had a great fall makhan also fell and all his glory philosophy and all his ego also disappeared into thin air all the other boys shouted themselves hoarse with delight so they had a good laugh and they were you know uh, laughing very roughly hoarse means rough but fatik was a little frightened now he was a little scared because he knew that this matter is not going to end here he knew what was coming and sure enough makan rose from mother earth blind as fate and screaming like the furies blind as fate means fate is supposed to be blind like fate is very unpredictable and blind and furies refers to the uh, the sisters in the greek mythology the female spirits and they were associated with vengeance so the comparison of makhan with a uh, fate and furies meant that he was intensely angry wild full of rage he just stood up from the ground because he fell down and he rushed at fatik scratched his face and beat him and kicked him and then went crying home so he was the one who went and started hitting fatik and he cried and he went home the first act of the drama was over so the first act is over now the second act let's see what happens when fatik uh, you know confronts his mother fatik wiped his face sat down on the edge of a sunken barge on the river bank now a lot of uh, the sceneries will take place in the story next to a river that is the reason you will have so many uh, words associated with boat river and so on now a sunken barge barge is a boat that is over here half sunk the boat is half sunk and it's like you know below the surface of the water fatik went and sat over there and he began to chew a piece of grass chew a piece of grass obviously the reason is he's absent minded and something is going on in his mind a boat came up to the landing and a middle aged man with gray hair and dark mustache stepped on shore so somebody comes uh, stepped on shore because there was a boat which had come up to the landing he saw the boy sitting there doing nothing and asked him where the chakravartis lived so this man came and inquired about the chakravartis now fatik should have been little uh, conscious because uh, he was looking for their house fatik went on chewing the grass and said over there but it was quite impossible to tell where he pointed he just said some casual way over there the stranger asked him again he swung his legs to and fro on the side of the barge and said go and find out and continue to chew the grass as before so he just you know turned a deaf ear to whatever this man was telling and somehow he wanted to get rid of him because in his mind he was preoccupied with some other thoughts probably he was contemplating that what his brother is going to tell his mom and how his mom is going to react so that is what we are assuming but now came but now a servant came down from the house and told fatik his mother wanted him fatik refused to move because he knew that his mother is not going to leave him but the servant was the master on this occasion so he was more powerful in this case he took fatik up roughly carried him kicking and struggling in important rate so fatik was very angry and he struggled to get out and he was intensely angry important rage means extreme anger when fatik came into the house mother saw him she called out angrily so you have been hitting makhan again fatik answered indignantly angrily no i haven't who told you that his mother shouted don't tell lies you have see now the mother is hearing a one sided opinion 
right? Because Fatik actually did not hit him, though he did something, but he didn't hit him. So Fatik said suddenly, I tell you, I haven't, you ask Makhan. But Makhan thought it best to stick to his previous statement. He said, yes, mother, Fatik did hit me. Fatik's patience was already exhausted. Already he was irritated. He could not hear this injustice. He rushed at Makhan and hammered him with blows. Means he gave him blows, forceful blows. Take that, he cried, and that and that for telling lies. His mother took Makhan's side in a moment. So the mother immediately took Makhan's side. So this is what we can understand, what kind of a perspective she had. And pulled Fatik away, beating him with her hands. So she started hitting Fatik. When Fatik pushed her aside, she shouted out, What, you little villain? Would you hit your own mother? So Fatik was also angry and he was a little adamant. And you know that, you know, boys at this age, they're quite aggressive. So he just pushed the mom aside and he said, and the mother said, What? You're going to hit me also? It was just at this critical juncture that the gray-haired stranger arrived. So there was this gray-haired stranger. He's Fatik's maternal uncle. He asked what the matter was. And Fatik looked sheepish and ashamed. Sheepish means embarrassed. But when his mother stepped back and looked at the stranger, her anger was changed to surprise. For she recognized her brother and cried, Why, Dada, where have you come from? So she was quite overwhelmed and she was happy to see her brother after a long time. It's a union between a sister and a brother. As she said these words, she bowed to the ground and touched his feet. This is a mark of respect. Her brother had gone away soon after she had married and he had started business in Bombay. So the brother and the sister had not met for a while. And in the meantime, Fatik's dad also passed away. And during this time, the uncle was working in Bombay. Bombay was the old name for Mumbai. Now it's, uh, you know, we all call address it Mumbai. Yeah, it's my city. Uh, but that time it was called as Bombay. So now that he came back to Calcutta, that's the reason he had come to meet his sister. <clears throat> so Bishambar had now come back to Calcutta and had once made inquiries about his sister. He had then hastened, means quickly, he went to see her as soon as he found out where she was. The next few days were full of rejoicing. The next few days were like quite happy. The brother asked after the education of the two boys. So he was concerned about the education of the boys. He was told by his sister that Fatik was a perpetual nuisance. So this is the perspective the mother had. According to her, he was a nuisance because he never studied. Perpetual means forever. He was lazy, disobedient, and wild. But Makhan was as good as gold, as quiet as lamb, and very fond of reading. So we can see that how biased the mother was. Bishambar kindly offered to take Fatik off his sister's hand. So Bishambar, I would say that, you know, he's a quite concerned relative and he wanted to do something for the child because somehow he felt that the child was out of place here. And he said that, let me take him to Kolkata where I can educate him. The widowed mother readily agreed. So she was quite happy. When his uncle asked Fatik if he would like to go to Calcutta with him, his joy knew no bounds. Now Fatik was also quite happy. Oh yes, uncle. And in a way that made it clear that he meant it. So he was quite happy. Now why was he so happy to come out of this place? Because there was nothing left for him. His closest relative, his mother, was like, you know, quite biased. And uh, what he only used to get from her is scolding and chiding sometimes beatings also. And his brother was always uh, against him. And the only um, freedom that he had is with his uh, you know, gang, where he used to do this kind of mischief. And this was Fatik's life, if you can sum it up. <clears throat> 